Uh, I was associated with uh, the, the incubation activities uh, and entrepreneurship initiative of IIT Bombay uh, right from early days. But of course, uh, after Professor Fatak uh, initiated the pilot here. So when we, when we were moving from pilot to uh, the establishment of a formal center for incubation and entrepreneurship, uh, I was associated at that time and uh, I was responsible for creating some of the initial policies and procedures. Uh, and also I think my experience uh, went little further than that. Uh, since I was involved with SIGN, uh, as uh, some people say, the entrepreneurship bug bit me and I have now my own company. So I can tell you my own journey of uh, last two, three years, how it has progressed, what are the challenges that one faces, right? Uh, how much an incubator helps and how much you are still on your own to uh, take your struggles and your company to some level. Uh, so I can, I can share, you those ex uh, share with you those experiences. So uh, to begin with, uh, okay, this is the broad outline. Uh, I'll just briefly talk about uh, the initiative. I think just repeat maybe some of the points that you might have already gone through. Uh, I'll then talk about the incubation facilities and the kind of policies and procedures we tried to set up. What was the objective of uh, those policies? What exactly did we want to achieve? and then conclude with uh, my own experiences and challenges that I see in any incubation activities. Uh, I understand that uh, your uh, interest uh, as a part of this workshop uh, is to set up similar facilities, right? Yeah. Not to become an entrepreneur yourself. No, <laughs> right. Because that makes a big difference on which side of the table you want to be, right? Whether you are setting up uh, infrastructure and facilities and policies or I, th I think it's important to be on both sides to really understand what an entrepreneur needs, what are his, uh, you know, challenges and to what extent an incubator can really meet them and address them and to what extent you should leave them alone. Right? I think that also is an important issue. The context is that IIT Bombay, uh, you know, is, is a large institute. Uh, we have 400 plus faculty. In fact, we are a postgraduate and research institute really with more than 1000 PhD students and more than 1500 master students who do a lot of R&D activities. So there is a lot of innovative work being done here. because It's a part of our postgraduate, postgraduate studies and a lot of research gets done. How much of this research, of course it's much of it is new, but how much of it is innovative and ready for entrepreneurship is, is a different issue. Uh, we all are required to do research, publish and have something new and uh, interesting in, in, in our work. And uh, there is a large workforce uh, or number of people who are involved in this. Uh, IIT Bombay uh, always wanted to you know, share this innovative work with the industry and uh, there is a Dean of Research and Development's office which is our interface to the industrial world and uh, through this channel we try to share our expertise and skills with the industry and there are mechanisms by which what we do can be transferred to the industry. Right? Ultimately what you do must be useful and uh, one way of uh, directly being useful is to share it with the industry. And there are well-defined policies now by which we can transfer these technologies to the industry. Right? Now, when you, when you discuss this issue of transfer, naturally, the one who developed the technology has to also have some benefit. And these benefits have been defined by institute and this is a fairly well-established uh, setup at the institute. And that is done through Dean R&D's office. Now, if you want to further encourage uh, your faculty and students to take their research on their own to the market, you need to really address a few more issues. And foundation for this was laid by IIT while trying to define its intellectual policies. I think the first step towards uh, you know, entrepreneurship coming out of educational and research institute is to have a very clearly defined intellectual property. And this was done 
uh, uh, and uh, this encouraged the faculty and the students to uh, understand the innovations that they are do doing and if they are you know in a position to uh, take it to the next level to the market then iit bombay made it available to them so intellectual property there are a number of issues that need to be addressed here so i think what uh, any institute if it is planning to take up this activity i think the first step would be to clearly define the intellectual policy property because as an employee of iit whatever work i do naturally the intellectual property is with the institute although i am author of that policy author of that work the ownership is always with the institute and the ownership has to be handed over to me in order for me to convert it into a, a enterprise so this has been defined naturally when when it is handed over to me for entrepreneurship iit would expect to gain something out of it so you need to define this as a part of your policies and procedures so once this was there and, and the parallel thing that happened at that time which professor fatak must have shared with you is uh, the pilot incubator which was set up at the uh, time when information technology was at its peak uh, and uh, most of the initiatives used to be in the dot coms right everybody had a idea to share with the public and therefore everybody was uh, trying to set up a you know internet based company basically the policy defines how the the work that has been done by an individual right uh, can be shared and what will be the basis of that sharing and it has to address many aspects of this because things can be quite complicated the work may be done by me alone or it may be done by me and my students it may be done as a part of my employment at iit it may be done as a part of research funding from the government or it may be also done based on some consultancy work that i do with the industry all of this has to be defined a proper sharing policy has to be put in place right so share, i mean basically it is a matter of numbers right you you need to define uh, so for example iit's policies are very generous so if i do consultancy or i want to do technology transfer uh, based on my work uh, you know iit has a sort of 30 70 kind of a sharing policy which is i think fairly uh, you know it's in the favor of uh, the author and uh, encourages him to uh, do work which is uh, practical and useful and and also get associated with the uh, industry so it's a it's a very Uh, open and flexible kind of a policy but naturally there are processes through which this has to be clearly identified ip stands for uh, okay now ip has to be first clearly understood ip is a policy on which you know which which has been clearly uh, the work which uh, is protected naturally has to be part of uh, some patent or some such thing right and iit has policies for patenting uh, no work may not also be patented because patent has patenting has a cost so i may do a work which is which gets published uh, and uh, once you publish it naturally only copyright you have but the the work itself is in public domain so in this case what are the issues involved in taking it further for entrepreneurship so all those also have been identified and defined what the author will give the institute that i would like to have see no institute has everything institute is the owner whereas i am the author now question is as far as i am the author and there is no other user it remains as a ownership of the institute only when there is somebody who wants to use it comes the issue of sharing whatever benefit we receive from that work and that benefit is shared in the 30 70% right so uh, so i think this was the first milestone in moving towards uh, you know and, and encouraging people to look at entrepreneurship as an alternative right uh, uh, as a career path uh, and this, then there was a uh, there is some organizations like ncl yeah i think ncl also probably has all these policies in place so that see that is first step then of course there are more things that need to be done because when i get into entre entrepreneurship i need something more not just the the idea right ha huh. so we'll come to that uh, little later but i think the point is uh, that i am an individual who is employed in this institute the work that i do is in this context 
I need to have ownership of that in order to build an organization or a product and then sell it in the market. So I need IIT's permission and that permission comes under the context of this IP policy. Okay. Okay, so at this point then the other track uh, which uh, was very important and which happened at this institute was the pilot incubator that you have already uh, been introduced. Uh, this uh, just places the whole thing in the context of you know end to end uh, that work that you do, how does it find use, right. So as you can see that uh, an institute primarily is engaged in research and development, you demonstrate that technology to your industry partners you develop prototypes and uh, demonstrate its usefulness. But beyond that, it becomes more focused towards industry and entrepreneurship, right? And, and you need to set up uh, the pro production or manufacturing of that. You need to market it, right? And then there has to be a buyer who will find value in what you have done. So this is the whole spectrum. And you need to keep this in mind in order to understand the challenges of entrepreneurship right so it's we educational institutes are generally towards one end right and we we are uh, you know engaged in r and d activities and uh, there are uh, uh, there are aspects of uh, industry and manufacturing and marketing which generally we are not aware and in order to uh, make a successful company we really need to understand the whole spectrum of these activities for the success of any organization. So, so we are at the one end, we really need to reach to the other end, what needs to be done, what are the uh, industries, what the industries do, what, are, what is their focus is sort of brought out in, order, in, order, in trying to understand how a research is taken to the end user. Uh, and you can see that technology transfer is one way of achieving this, right? That is where IIT will talk to the industry and will share the research and maybe get a one-time consideration for that, right? uh, Or of course, it could be also uh, a some kind of a royalty also is possible. So we have two ways by which we can uh, join hands with the industry. One is uh, doing outright technology transfer. The other is to enter in some kind of a long-term revenue sharing or some kind of a royalty so that the industry can exploit the research and uh, you know research work that has been done in the institute. Now this may be replaced then by an entrepreneur you know the, the faculty himself may set up a company who wants to do that and therefore there will be a technology transfer and that company will have to undertake manufacturing, marketing and so on. Okay, uh, so uh, with this pilot in place which actually inspired many of our students to look at this option and also uh, some of the faculty, uh, we wanted to clearly understand what are the challenges right? and uh, these challenges are related to the risk associated in starting anything new. So what are the barriers to a new venture creation? And we need to understand this so that we can facilitate and reduce the risks associated with new ventures. So incubation facility, the goal of that facility naturally would be to remove these barriers. So one of the barrier is naturally that, you know, there are opportunities in the market today. Should I really take up a job or should I get into entrepreneurship? Uh, and uh, this is a this is a choice that has to be made by individuals especially our students are always uh, uh, you know uh, this is one of the first decision that they need to make they might end up doing good work but whether they want to carry it forward with entrepreneurship or to take up a job naturally this is an aspect of risk so if i can minimize those risks and help them then they might be more entrepreneurship uh, oriented than uh, let's say a job oriented uh, uh, kind of a professional. Uh, there is also an issue of uh, high upfront investment. Therefore, we need some kind of a financial help that we can provide to them. Uh, generally, there are not too many role models. So we need to uh, have some kind of mentorship in place so that we can minimize the risk of failures. Because these are young people or people who are not exposed to business world or in the market 
and we need to give them adequate mentorship so that the risk of failure can be uh, reduced or minimized. Uh, we have to also educate people about how to, what are the rules, regulations in starting new companies, right? What are the government policies? What are the licenses required? What kind of, uh, uh, you know, there is, you, as you are aware, there are company laws. Those company laws, many of us in the academic world are simply not familiar. Right? And they, they look very difficult. Uh, so we need to create uh, resources or what is referred here as ecosystem by which this load can be reduced uh, from the uh, uh, new entrepreneurs. In fact, this is quite an issue because I have gone through this in the last two years and uh, there are so many rules and so many filings that you have to make that if you do not, you may not even be aware and you might really make mistakes which, uh, which might lead to some penalty because you have not been following the rules and regulations. So, you need to uh, provide this support. Okay, so, so, this is uh, the same story that uh, you have heard before that we had a pilot incubator and we had a small infrastructure which was created to support. Uh, so what exactly did this pilot demonstrate uh, in terms of the barriers that we had mentioned earlier? Uh, it allowed people to walk in with an idea and they gave the initial support and resources which was needed by them uh, in order to start their company. Uh, there was an equity based uh, consideration that means uh, the incubator uh, gave the facilities uh, for uh, on, on the basis of sharing the equity right instead of explicitly charging because uh, the, the, the new ventures do not really have much cash in hand. The only thing that they really come to you with is the equity and they can offer you that equity for whatever services and facilities that they need. So, this was an a, a ad hoc kind of a equity based model. In fact, that time we did not even know who will hold this equity, who owns that equity because there was no, no, there were no rules and policies in place. Right? The initial companies just agreed to give the equity but in fact from our side we were not ready to take that equity. The whole thing was quite informal. Uh, but but it, it actually educated us in terms of what was required in order to formalize this model, in order to take it to the uh, institute level from a pilot. Uh, so pilot, we, we regarded it as quite a successful story and there were a number of uh, uh, experiences that we got from this which helped us uh, to move forward. Okay. Uh, this also created a lot of excitement within the institute because this uh, came to be known as another uh, uh, option to the faculty and the students. And if you see that time, uh, there were a number of uh, uh, new success stories like, like the IT, especially in the IT domain with Infosys and others. So they became the role models for the students and everybody was excited with what was happening in that domain. And also there was a low entry barrier as far as the IT companies were concerned, right? It was also easier to set up the facilities. What you really needed was to give a few systems and a place and the people could start the company and at least work towards creating a prototype and a product. So the barrier to the initial uh, uh, work that is required in entrepreneurship was very low. And that is what the pilot could provide. Then the, when with the success of this, uh, the institute then decided to see whether we can make a separate initiative out of this, which is available to all the departments, not just confined to the IT domain, but also is available to the other engineering faculties. Uh, so, so for this, uh, we to formalize the policies and procedures and also try to understand the institute uh, uh, commitments which are necessary in order to uh, formalize this. Uh, the first and the most important was really the consideration model. S since the intellectual property is owned by the institute uh, and that is to be transferred, it is not possible to expect one time uh, charges from young entrepreneurs. 
So the only successful model all over the world is to really have an equity based model which means that uh, when you transfer the technology developed within the institute and on which the institute has a intellectual property rights, uh, you would like to give this away for an equity consideration. So naturally then the question comes who can hold the equity and since IIT as a government institute is not permitted to hold equity, we decided to create a separate society which is really a society set up by what we call friends of IIT. Basically these are alumni and our ex-students and some office bearers of the institute who created this uh, uh, as it is called section 25 company in the country uh, which is really a society which is a non-profit kind of a organization and uh, this is an umbrella uh, organization which uh, would own that incubator and which would hold the equity on behalf of IIT. This was the model that we thought of. So sign was set up as an independent legal entity although the office bearers and the board will be really mainly drawn from the institute because the institute policies will have to be implemented and the institute will like to oversee uh, the functioning of this uh, uh, society. So it has a functional autonomy, it has its own governing board and uh, it has a specific mandate to set up a business incubator and to help these uh, organizations which are incubated there to, uh, to build successful companies. Uh, initial funding from IIT came in the form of space, infrastructure and so on. Right? And uh, also at the same time government of India through department of science and technology had taken up a initiative called uh, technology development board and uh, TDB also wanted to get associated with uh, this initiative and they also agreed to share some of the funds for the initial setting up of the incubator. There was a funding from alumni also and uh, we wanted to start off this initiative by creating a big awareness within the campus because once you have an incubator you need to have a steady flow of uh, applications for starting new companies. So on day one uh, uh, this may not happen and you need to create an awareness and you have to tell people that not every research that you do is a candidate for incubation and entrepreneurship. Uh, therefore you need to consider the utility of your research uh, in, the, in the ongoing or, or the, uh, the state of art kind of a uh, industrial context. So we thought of doing some pre-incubation and uh, regular incubation and also some virtual incubation. The virtual incubation was primarily limited to uh, you know, companies which, uh, are, which need infrastructure which is not possible to provide in the IITs uh, or science uh, facilities. right? Because ultimately, let us say if you have a uh, idea coming from chemical or metallurgy or something, naturally you cannot give them infrastructure which may be needed for their incubation. Uh, so vir virtual incubation helped us in two ways, one is uh, the companies for which uh, the office kind of infrastructure is not the main requirement but they really need something much more than just the office premises. Uh, and also because we had limited facilities we thought that we could admit more than whatever facilities uh, could hold through the concept of virtual incubation. So there were a few companies that we tried to put in this category. Yeah. Can you talk a little more about what you do offer what, through virtual incubation, like if it's not office space, what is it? Right. Since there is no specific space given to them, but they, they are still registered as science uh, companies and therefore they will have access to not just the office facilities, the regular office facilities, but all the mentoring and other legal support that IIT, uh, the, that the sign can provide. So help in registering their companies, help in maintaining their accounts, etc. Even with virtual incubation, there would be some equity that IIT will take because of the intellectual property that might have been transferred. In fact, we clearly try to define the, the scope for sharing this equity. The, the equity agreement 
is not only covering the intellectual property, but it is also covering the infrastructure and the branding that happens through IIT and the network that IIT Bombay will make accessible to the incubating company. Right? through its uh, alumni network, through its industrial network and also uh, the, the support that the institute's infrastructure can provide because we have a la large number of uh, research labs available on the campus, uh, faculty who are expert uh, in various areas and also the library support. So all these are also a part of the environment which we share with the incubating companies. Therefore, there are three dimensions uh, which are covered by our equity agreement. The intellectual property, the, the infrastructure and also the, the, the IIT's brand and uh, access to the IIT's network, uh, the, the, the industry network and the alumni network. So even in the case of virtual incubation, the, what is really missing is the physical infrastructure but the rest is still in place and therefore they are the companies which are under the IIT's broad policies of incubation. The thing is sign versus other incubation plan, and any differences, any contradictions, any different way of looking at sign incubator versus other incubators. If you have any experience that would be wonderful if you can share it with the partner. Right, we will talk about some other models but you know the, the I am talking about sign as a model. Uh, of a typical government organization which is, uh, which is uh, sharing the intellectual property generated within the educational and research activities, right? But there are definitely other models. Yeah, I, I'll, but the one which I just probably can mention right away is uh, uh, incubators being set up by uh, industrial associations, right? CII for example, the Con Confederation of Indian Industries may actually create an infrastructure. Basically, see all incubations are trying to facilitate uh, the new entrepreneurship. Uh, some of the things that they may do is to first give the infrastructure, the second is to give you, help you in marketing and business development and third, they may actually make some funds available. So these are number of things that a, a, any incubator can do. What an incubator in IIT can do and what an a incubator under confederation of industries can do will depend on resources available to them. Right? Uh, for example, some uh, VCs are setting up incubator like say in Bangalore there are few who are saying that let us set up our own incubators, let us receive applications, we will create a small infrastructure right? and we will mentor them and maybe on day one we will also provide them some funds. Again, this will be done based on some equity consideration, right? So overall, I think uh, there may be some few constraints which are missing in different contexts. For example, ability to hold equity, this constraint will not be there for others, whereas it is a constraint at IIT, right? Uh, because we cannot take profits out of sign into IIT, that will be another constraint. Whereas these constraints may not be applicable to a VC funded incubator or it may not be available to or it may not be applicable to industry funded incubator. But I think when, when you talk of an incubator, you have to consider these three requirements of any incubating company. A company needs funds, company, company needs space and infrastructure and company needs some hand holding. So can you provide these under whatever umbrella that you can define? So, so we tried to institutionalize uh, what was learnt in our pilot experience. Uh, okay, then when we are setting up the, when, when we are moving from pilot to uh, formalizing this at the institute level, we need naturally needed policies and procedures and before define, you need to also understand the scope of your uh, business incubator you want to put, uh, put up. So I, first thing that we realized was to first in, in, in trying to define the scope, uh, the, the exercise that I, we undertook was to define the vision and mission for our business incubator because that puts in place, you know, what are your short term and long term goals and uh, what can be achieved, right. So we spent considerable amount of time with some of our leading alumni uh, who have been very successful business people in trying to define the vision and mission. So for example, uh, is uh, social entrepreneurship to be included? Uh, are you focusing only on successful entrepreneurship or you want to encourage people to be entrepreneur? 
You don't want to worry too much about they being successful or not successful. So I think some of these goals have to be clearly defined before you can really define the policies and procedures in details. Uh, right? so, so for example, should the business incubator be profitable? Right? Or you just want to have it as a support facility? Uh, should it be proactively construct creating the, the, the infrastructures and the mentor, mentorship and uh, legal other supports or it should be on a demand basis? What kind of monitoring you would do? Uh, all those things need to be clearly understood before you can uh, you know, develop uh, these uh, procedures and policies in details. You need to understand the constraints. Uh, would you be funding these people or would you uh, just provide space? Uh, what are the regulations within the institute? Let's say so if I am a faculty and I am setting up my entrepreneurship, how much time can I give? Right? And uh, what would be my consideration? And if my company becomes a very successful company, so is it only related to equity or there is something more? All those things have to be clearly defined. Um, so we, we try to understand these issues because many of the initial uh, proposals came from faculty and uh, uh, naturally they have other responsibilities. So how much time can they really devote to such activities has to be clearly worked out. And uh, understand the areas in which you want to sub give support to them. So science, science vision and mission was set up. Uh, I suppose you have probably seen this already. Uh, so we, we want to create an, uh, create an environment to translate the knowledge and innovation that is generated within the institute. So we don't really want to become a, a facility which can be you know, shared with outside also and who can come here and set up their uh, companies here. But it has to be rooted within the institute. Right? And uh, we, we want, our mission clearly said that we want to support innovation and knowledge based entrepreneurship right, in the IIT Bombay community. Uh, specific that our goal is to serve IIT Bombay community through this. Uh, and create wealth is not the only goal but also social value. So this was also part of our uh, mission. Of course, you know, it, it's simple, sim simple to say, right? Uh, but uh, what exactly does it mean when I say that uh, let us say social creation of social value also is a goal and how can sign facilitate that. Uh, do I do something different for these companies than for the companies whose focus is to uh, be successful economically and financially. Right? So maybe this is a question that you can ask uh, towards the end when you, uh, you know, when sign people are here and talk about this. Okay, so, so this is our broad model uh, and we, we said that we uh, three you know focus areas the of course the the economic and wealth creation is a generally understood goal of any business organization but we said that being a technology institute where lot of uh, you know strategic research is also done and useful to the government uh, organizations in r and d and and uh, defense and so many services we thought that we'll also undertake strategic uh, 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 companies, companies which do work in the strategic areas which will be of in importance to uh, the government organizations with the focus being on technology. Uh, so wealth, wealth creation is not the focus here and the social as is the third uh, dimension of uh, our incubation model. So we have had companies in all the three cases uh, with, with different uh, probably levels of success. But we need to also understand the constraints that they face. So for example, why strategic companies cannot generate wealth right? or why social companies can also not generate wealth. Uh, these are some of the points that we need to understand uh, and what really distinguishes between uh, these three different categories. Okay. So, so these are broadly our uh, policies and uh, probably you are uh, familiar with some of these. So we now take uh, proposals only from faculty and our alumni. We had a big debate uh, initially because during our pilot, lot of companies came from students who were still studying here. So one of the issues that we had to resolve uh, immediately was, 
can you have a company when you are still studying and can you really do a justice to both your academic commitments and to your organization so i still remember a class when i used to have a couple of ceos and ctos in my class right and they were still in third year and it was very hard to uh, you know uh, uh, ensure that uh, they, they 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 are not defocusing themselves from studies uh, they, they were naturally good students and uh, later on when i became dean uh, of academic program this was the first issue that i needed to address because i was now looking after not uh, not my not the sign at that time but i was looking after the academic commitments of the students so we we made a uh, provision in fact and also some kind of a uh, policy that if you are a student studying you cannot have a commitment to a company maybe you should take a break then take a break and uh, do justice to your uh, you know entrepreneurship initiative come back and do your uh, uh, remaining uh, studies uh, okay the consideration model was an equity model and also a revenue sharing model in fact uh, we we felt when we started receiving the business proposals from uh, our uh, uh, community uh, there were different types of uh, you know projects coming up and some some had you know a, a you know time plan of generating revenue and profits which might go over 3 years 4 years some had some had a some had done the feasibility but product development was yet to be done fully so the gestation period before you start earning a revenue and profit could be substantially different from company to company so uh, so do you do you just have only equity based model or is it a good idea to do revenue sharing also so when when i looked up was looking after the sign um, uh, setup we devised a model which is taking both uh, we might have a combination of equity and revenue sharing because there were some proposals which were uh, planning to have a very early revenue right and uh, where the the promoter may not want to give a large equity to sign in fact you know we have to understand uh, uh, you know this from the market uh, uh, you know scenario what kind of equity you should take so let's say i mentioned to you 30 70 model now do you really take 30 70 in the equity uh, that probably no no venture will ever succeed if uh, somebody demands a 30% equity on day one uh, now in order to understand how much equity iit should take you have to really understand the role of technology in a entrepreneurship activity or a role of product or a role of research in a entrepreneurship activity so what does the research or prototype that i have developed how does how much does it contribute towards the success of a company right it's a this was a very important question to answer in order to arrive at the level of equity that iit should demand from these companies right because i am transferring the intellectual property and i need to take equity for that so should it be 5% should it be 30% should it be 15% and that is where you have to get some market inputs and you need to talk to you know market leaders or industry people or uh, even vcs to understand uh, these equations and what we felt is that the idea itself the product idea really does not contribute to a success more than 10 to 15% right there is much more that is needed than just the basic core idea right you will build a product but then you need to you know you need to define the manufacturing environment for that marketing sales etc these are the other bigger challenges and therefore assuming that it is 10 10% to 15% we said equity should be into 15% of 30% share that iit has in any uh, you know sharing so since iit has a 30 70 sharing and of that 30 the contribution towards success is only 10% of that therefore iit should take 3 to 4% equity in any company for an ip so this is what we 
arrived at. But of course, there are other components that I said uh, before that besides the intellectual property, you have the infrastructure, you have also the mentoring. So for this, you may take additional equity. So our model worked out equity in the range of 3 to 8 percent, uh, right, for uh, depending on, uh, you know, the, how much of uh, support we can provide. Uh, and uh, revenue sharing naturally can be uh, looked upon as a way of reducing the equity component. So there were companies uh, who, who had, uh, you know, uh, who imagined that uh, their companies will be highly successful, maybe something like Google or Yahoo uh, in future. And naturally nobody will give you 78% of equity in such companies. So there were people who were willing to uh, share either revenue or investments coming into the company for the equity. So we have actually had uh, cases where we took as little as 1% equity and as high as 8% equity in some of the cases. So duration, how long can it uh, naturally? How revenue sharing works? Like through supply? Revenue means, let's say, I, I, I have a product ready, right? Uh, and uh, I expect uh, that maybe after one year, my marketing and sales will be in place. And let's say I'll earn one crore revenue okay, in the first year of my operations or second year of my operations. So you take a part of that in place of equity. So I may say that instead of taking 8% equity, I will take say 5% equity and 1% of revenue. Okay? Certain number of years. For certain number of years. Yeah, it is not perpetual. So in most cases, we had restricted revenue sharing for say two to three years. Okay. Uh, so duration, we said, will be. Okay, we have those, some exit options there. Huh, right. See, that is another problem uh, with any incubator is that I I hold equity against the infrastructure. Now, infrastructure has a tangible cost. Equity has no tangible price or value till I find a buyer for that or there is a trading and I can sell off that equity. So there is always a risk associated and considering the higher uh, uh, failure rates in, in any new entrepreneurship, uh, you are really taking a risk okay, in taking equity only. Uh, therefore, we thought that wherever possible, we will have less equity and more uh, revenue right? depending on our assessment of the risk associated uh, with that. But of course, this has to be in discussion with the promoter. This I think was a very important point. Uh, we needed to arrive at uh, percentages which would appeal to entrepreneurs, right, who, who will find it appropriate, you know, for uh, their uh, uh, risks that they, they themselves are going to take. Because it's, uh, you know, look at it from the entrepreneur's point of view. He has an idea and he comes to you, uh, he is willing to share some equity, but there is still some much more that he needs. He needs, uh, for example, funding. Uh, and uh, there will be challenges of building his team. On day one, in an environment like IIT, the team you have is really only technical team. You know, on, on day one, you don't have people with marketing and sales experience or experience in business development. Uh, so on day one, actually all teams are or all proposals are weak in that respect unless they have some tie up with somebody outside. Right? So you might, uh, make a proposal uh, with some people in IIT and some people uh, from uh, external world. These may be alumni or these may be uh, other uh, industry people. So. So based on this, we make an assessment of the proposal and uh, you decide on the level of equity and revenue sharing. Uh, okay. And uh, okay, then uh, uh, the duration we said should not be more than three years in any case because uh, you, you must become profitable uh, or you must know where you are going in, the, in three years. Otherwise, uh, you know, in the, in the comfort of incubator where costs are minimum and you are provided with uh, ready infrastructure, we tend to uh, become, you know, complacent because your running costs are very low. You know, most of our companies, 
uh, you know, they, uh, their burning rate, as we call, is not more than a few lakh rupees a month. In fact, if they have three, four people, mostly their own friends, uh, in that case, the salary component is really very small. And therefore, they become comfortable and, and the pressures of going out and selling and getting revenue keeps reducing. And in many of the companies, uh, I, I saw this attitude which is typical of a lab attitude, you know. So let's keep adding more and more features to the product or more and more, uh, you know, engineering. Uh, and therefore, you keep postponing. In fact, the approach taken outside is exactly opposite of what we do in an incubator, which are coming from educational institute. There, in fact, they will start with the seed marketing. So if you are, let's say, trying to come out with a soap or something, you say, let me buy it from somewhere or let it get manufactured somewhere else. Let me first create a brand and a market. Whereas here, our approach is, let's build a product, spend time in validating that product. And, uh, and then since we all come from an engineering uh, research background, we are tempted by constantly comparing it to 10 products in the market and making it better than them. So this battle never ends. And therefore, we need to put some on them to say that you have to get out three years is the maximum time. In fact, first major review happens after 18 months and there are milestones which are defined. That is a part of our monitoring policy that we have put in place. When we admit somebody, there are a number of agreements which are signed with them, not just the equity agreement uh, which defines the infrastructure and other things, but also the, the facilities agreement, the agreement for tenure in the, uh, in the incubator and the requirements of constant monitoring and milestones to be achieved are also part of uh, that ag those agreements. Uh, legal relationship, we have these various contractual agreements. Uh, we also uh, had uh, some corpus available for giving loans uh, because this money came from the Department of Science and Technology and we said we can give some loans to the companies on day one. Although there are very few takers for this because uh, you know, most of us come from middle class uh, families and you know, loan, we are averse to any loan. Uh, and therefore, I will rather spend my own limited money or not take salaries and uh, you know, do the development and uh, other things because you are generally staying on campus or you have friends on campus, so your day to day requirements are taken care of. These are again some of the comforts which are really not uh, very appropriate or correct in the context of entrepreneurship. And we found that there were very few takers for loans. And although these were almost interest-free loans. Actually, the, the alumni grant came for the facility which is here available on the top floor. Uh, whereas the institute uh, created the infrastructure in a separate uh, building, uh, right? And uh, uh, there was no cash which was given by any alumni or by institute for supporting the companies. It's only in terms of uh, facilities. Yeah. So the, the loan component was supported primarily through the DST grant. So it's a repayable once again to the DST. Pardon? Repayable grant is payable? No, in fact, uh, I don't think this is repayable to no, is the DST. Yeah, I think, but you can get more details. Because this is, uh, this is expected to become a corpus and it probably should uh, you know, build further. Today I was discussing my uh, registrar about this. I mean, mm -hmm. what should be the arrangement for this? Yeah, right. right. I, I think uh, uh, the first, at least the first uh, component was not uh, refundable. Okay. So means by uh, the, the institute need not pay back to the DST, but of course the companies have to pay back because okay. you want to roll it uh, further. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Then we had the benchmarks for graduation and exit. Right, you need to have very clearly defined exit policies. Uh, exit policies not only for the company to exit, but also exits for the, your equity. Our equity agreement, uh, which probably the sign people will discuss in more details, uh, has uh, you know all the required uh, uh, considerations. So, for example, if the uh, the sign is holding the equity, uh, what are the stages at which it can exit? Right. And exit may be uh, you know, partial, may be complete. Uh, it may be when you are profitable, 
or it may be when some venture funding is coming into the company so all those uh, all those uh, are covered in the agreements so we sh we set up these facilities uh, and uh, there were some facilities which were given to companies specifically and some which were shared like the office infrastructure and so on uh, we then also had uh, this network of uh, mentors right the sign has a board and uh, uh, the board uh, has a distinguished people from the industry and alumni so this uh, this became available for mentoring the various companies plus we also now answering your question we also created a network of uh, uh, not really network just we have some on the panel uh, lawyers and uh, accountants who can provide this various services they have been empaneled by sign and uh, uh, for basic services they are free but uh, specific services uh, will be on a charge basis and the company will directly pay these agencies at a predefined rate but at least uh, you know the com all the companies uh, were made aware of the various obligations for forming their companies everybody has to form a private limited company and uh, they have to register with the ROC register of companies you have to have your own CA and they, in all the agreements uh, we have defined that they have to submit their annual uh, account statements and so on so all these are very uh, you know we educate every applicant uh, about these requirements really, this really didn't um, materialize uh, uh, we, we thought we'll set up a seed fund and the purpose of the seed fund would be uh, to give some kind of a cash uh, you know uh, or to the to the applicants uh, now really you know you need to define how this will be given it will may be given for the equity right so i give funds uh, fund could be a loan right as mentioned earlier the fund could be uh, in place of equity so i give let's say i do some valuation and uh, take additional equity and give money to the entrepreneur so that he can carry on his development and business activities or it could be an outright grant in fact DST has these three mechanisms available and uh, they gave us the money it was our decision to use primarily as, as a loan because we, f we felt more comfortable with that right because loan is something where you, you have you feel it will come back right in fact but that also was the reason that people don't like loan you know i would like to take it as a equity and uh, we found that uh, equity is something which government doesn't understand properly right so if they say you are giving 10 lakh rupees loan then take equity worth 10 lakh now that is not possible because on day one the company has entire equity of 1 lakh so naturally at face value nobody will give the equity to the government uh, and uh, valuations are not easy to define and therefore uh, it was not very easy to uh, to fund the companies through the equity route initially later on you know we had number of meetings with the DST people and uh, we tried to uh, create a model through which the equity route also became available and in fact some companies did receive including my company we did receive funding from DST uh, which was in terms of equity uh, they, they, they took equity and uh, in order to conclude this you have to do some kind of a valuation so you say my share with face value of rupees 10 at what price will I give it to let's say whoever is bringing the money in fact uh, most of our companies uh, have got little funds from either angel investors as we call them or people who have some money and wants to uh, put in your idea and uh, so uh, sign created some kind of a benchmark for valuation in terms of num the, the cost of infrastructure and the cost of services. So for example, if I incubate a company X for three years at let's say 6% equity stake in them, in three years what is the cost to me uh, to sign? Let's say that cost comes out to be say 25 lakh rupees because ultimately you know I am subsidizing a lot so what is the cost uh, of that subsidy that I offer to the company so I say now if my subsidy costs me 25 lakh rupees for 6% equity what is the value of your equity and then we use that as a baseline 
for valuation and in fact DST has taken that in some cases. Right? So for example in some cases a 10 rupee share because of science uh, participation and uh, science uh, infrastructure was valued as much as 2000 rupees per share right? uh, because of the equity base being small and things like that. So, so in some but that was the basis that you know if the what is the science equity and what is the science cost for supporting the incubator for that time and based on that had a pricing model and that pricing model was used for uh, taking additional equity through which some money can be made available to uh, the companies. I just wanted to talk about some of the ventures uh, which, uh, which uh, are there right now. Uh, for example, uh, you know it actually good to see how they relate to the faculty's work and how faculty proposed uh, companies based on their work. So Gram Plus Plus for example is a product, a GIS product which was developed in CSRE, the, our department here and uh, it was done through a government grant. Almost the entire development was done through uh, DST projects. So before they wanted to, before they could incubate, naturally they have to, it was an intellectual property shared between IIT and DST. So DST had to give a go ahead and there was a lot of time taken by DST as well as IIT to sort out the IP related issues. Once the IP related issues were sorted out and the DST allowed the company to build uh, you know, their further product line based on the Gram++ plus plus product, they were incubated. Right? And uh, today they are uh, doing I think reasonably well, they, they have a model, uh, they have some further developments and they have a few customers uh, who are using this product. Uh, in fact, this is my own company which, uh, uh, which primarily works in the collaboration space. Uh, where people can collaborate online uh, with each other in, in whichever domain you know you may be in a research domain or you may be in marketing domain we all work together and collaborate so this uh, software allows you to work together right and they also does all the information management knowledge management interaction management uh, somewhat better that's what we claim somewhat better than what the other tools do right now that proof of whether it is really better or not is where the market will test it out. Uh, well, we have, we have been incubating in sign for two and a half years. Uh, this is what our product does. So you can see that collaboration has number of uh, components and probably our product is one which handles all the stages of any collaboration right from creating and collecting information, collaborating and discussing it among your group and further consolidating it in for uh, consolidating it for final sharing and reporting. Okay, so let me skip this. So, so when I now look back on what I have been doing in sign and uh, so uh, and you I just said that we have been there for more than little more than two years. Uh, we did have some funding from various sources uh, but funding which will which allowed us only to work on a, a shoestring budget level for two years. Uh, so where are we and what were the challenges that we were facing? Understanding the market is probably one of the biggest challenge. You, know, you, you are excited by a product. You say, oh, I have a good collaboration product. But really that, that is the least important when you, know, in, when you go out to the market. You know, who is, where is your market? What do they buy? What are the prices at which level they buy? Right? Uh, so all these things are important. How will you reach out to them? Uh, how will you position your product? How will you differentiate it with uh, others? Right? Uh, who, who, what is the team you have? In fact, many of the sign failures, we did have some problem cases and many of them were because of a bad team. Right? You don't, you know, one individual cannot do. In fact, the faculty cannot give more than 25% officially just one day a week. Of course, unofficially you may give all seven days. But uh, issue is that one or two people cannot really form a company and make it successful. This is the biggest challenge, getting a right kind of a group which will address all aspects of a company, not just the product development, marketing, sales, uh, you know, uh, technology and uh, all those aspects. Uh, understand the growth and sustenance challenges. And these, these 
uh, where the challenges and you know uh, difficulties that any uh, incubator faces not only at the beginning but even after two years uh, like uh, what we are constantly going through as in my company I'm talking about so so we then build this ecosystem further uh, after creating the sign and you know, we we have number of other initiatives that we thought uh, will enhance the incubation activities further uh, there are number of events that we conduct which make uh, students and faculty aware of uh, these. Uh, we are also trying, uh, I, at least uh, I was trying that and we had met a few individuals to create a separate seed fund, not under the government or DST umbrella, but something which will have, which will have you know, more flexible rules. And uh, we had uh, talked to State Bank for example. and. Uh, uh, it was almost set up, but there are a number of again rules and procedures which come in the way government rules. So let's say you want to create a seed fund which will invest in these companies. Should it be registered with SEBI? You know, because SEBI is an organization which uh, handles uh, all equity related investments. So it re really needed a lot of work both on our side and on the state bank side to get the picture clear whether to go ahead with creating that kind of a seed, seed fund. Then there are other legal issues. Should it be under some trust? Will SIGN manage it? Will SBI manage it? You know, number of these problems do come up. Uh, we did create a panel of mentors. Uh, we invited number of industry experts to take up mentorship of these companies to, to tell them what are the strategic issues that they need to address, not just the product focus, but how to uh, you know, grow beyond certain point. And we, we asked these people to take up certain specific companies of their interest and have a one-to-one -one kind of a mentorship over a long period of time. And that did happen in, in some cases very uh, fruitfully. Yes, we have a model, in fact we defined a model for mentorship, uh, again in terms of equity. And we said that let, let the mentor commit a certain fixed time per month and let us also, let's also define the role he will play and the value he will bring. And then we said we can have some kind of equity model, let's say something like half a percent for six months or some such thing. Right? Uh, and uh, so that, that model was quite helpful uh, because you know, if sign defines it, everybody doesn't have to negotiate it again and again. Right? So, so that was a good thing and therefore we could straight away approach them. Again, IIT's uh, uh, you know, name helped us because we are well networked and we have a lot of alumni and they, they felt that they, they can add a lot of value through this. So this was quite successful actually and I hope Sign will continue doing it uh, further. Yeah. And, and the relationships that half a percent, it came out of Sign's percentage or this was additional? that came, that the entrepreneurs gave to the, the mentors? The, the, the entrepreneurs gave, no, it did not come out from science uh, uh, equity. It okay. has to be from the entrepreneurs equity, in addition. That. In addition, and the, the standard sort of relationship, it, what SIGN defined was just a, a time commitment or did SIGN also define sort of very no, it specific? Gave some like, guideline. It gave some guidelines. You know? Right, these guidelines could be, you know, for very specific type of activity and it could be in terms of specific commitment. Because so, some people might be able to give me a day a week, but there are some senior other people who may not be able to give uh, more than a half a day a month and they might come and attend only board meetings and they might uh, help you only at strategic level or at networking you, networking you with uh, another industry player where you can probably do a pilot of your product and things like that. So they brought value from that sense. So uh, the, the percentages were defined and the time was defined only as a model. And you need to fine tune it uh, you know, on a case by case basis. But you had a model to start with. That was a good thing. Broker type fees with either mentors or, or other people who were able to set up deals with investors, things like that? I, Get the broker fees, like if if somebody was able to fix a, a deal or fix a meeting with a VC or an angel mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. put money in, mm -hmm. did 
did that person end up taking some percentage? Uh, actually, no, I don't think such cases have happened. Uh, so basically what you're saying is, let's say I have a mentor and uh, he helps me in getting a VC funding. Uh, I'm not aware, but I, I think probably again, it would be case by case basis. Right? But, but it's definitely not part of the science model. And then we have some formal, I think, uh, any end under which this workshop is uh, being conducted and uh, we have relationships with Thai and so on. Uh, so these, these are, again, very helpful kind of uh, uh, associations that SIGN has for, uh, uh, for facilitating entrepreneurship. Okay, pre-incubation was uh, something we thought See, people, uh, people were excited with entrepreneurship idea. So I have, a research, I have a project in which my student has done something, I have done something. Uh, they, they, they want to apply uh, to the sign for incubation. But they do not have all the data which is necessary. See, first, uh, they have to do market survey. They have to understand the state of art uh, in, in, the, in the market today with respect to that segment. They have to also work out some kind of business plan. Uh, they may also need to develop their product further. So in order to help them in doing all this, we created a pre-incubation initiative where SIGN will act as a mentor to the faculty or the student to further uh, enhance their idea or to collect the required data so that a good business plan can be made. So it can be it can be, let's say, some little bit of funding that SIGN may give, let's say, a 2 lakh rupees to me, through which I may hire one programmer or somebody who will further develop it and bring to a stage where I can do better feasibility and better, you know, uh, evaluation of that. Or it could be somebody who will do a simple research uh, for, say, copyright uh, or patenting purpose. Is there something already there? Or who will go to the market and do some background study? It was simply to facilitate uh, the person's position with respect to his readiness for applying to sign. So we tried. I don't think we had too many there uh, because I think uh, this, uh, the institute already has enough research and other facilities through which these things can be done. Right? So for example, I can get enough number of master's students, PhD students, and many of us have research grants through which I can essentially do what uh, we were planning to do through uh, pre-incubation. But we thought it might be useful to students. I think one or two student groups were helped because they don't have access to resources. And we thought we could support them uh, and bring them to a stage where their idea can be considered for incubation. Oh yes, in fact, there can be dropout. In fact, that also, see, dropout is not a bad idea. At least I know that I should not go further, right, and not waste time, right? You are not wasting the right. society's resources, right? So, in a, in a way, that helps the candidate. Yes, it does help. That's why even our restriction of two to three years and asking them to do early exit is also beneficial both to entrepreneur and to the incubator. Right? So, if something is not going anywhere, it's better to stop that and uh, look at other alternatives. Same rules. There are no different rules for, let's say, equity model or any such thing. Uh, in fact, there is really, we don't distinguish from where the application has come. Yes, he can, student can apply for a leave and uh, it can be granted. Yeah. Yeah, under, yeah, at, uh, see, postgraduate is anyway very short duration, two year program. Uh, and uh, PhD students rarely think of entrepreneurship, right? They are very focused on their research work. So it's really the undergraduate students who get excited by this. Uh, and in fact, most of our proposals have come from uh, undergraduate students, you know. And, uh, uh, I think nowadays, of course, uh, there are hardly any proposals from students who are studying. Uh, earlier, we had uh, some proposals, and then we had some difficulties also. Uh, therefore, that uh, framework was put up, and uh, either you take a break or you do it after finishing your studies. So I think that has become quite uh, uh, well accepted now. And the fact that 
We have that facility also. So we have now a sabbatical that we give also for incubation. Usually you have a sabbatical once in six years, right, based on your just service. Now we said that you can now have a sabbatical based on, you know, your entrepreneurship and which can come any time, right. So in the, in the bucket of six years, I used to take it at after six years. Now I can take it any time, right. And that, that, because I cannot wait for six years to get over till I do my entrepreneurship. So we, we permitted that. We actually changed our policy at the institute level to encourage people to take sabbatical for this. And during that period, uh, practically he's on the payroll uh, of the institute. Yeah, sabbatical has its own rules. Yeah. So you, you get full pay. Okay. Thank you, okay. Thank you very much.